Day. We live in a culture where everything is about the outside. Uh, come on, we live in a culture where it's, you know, social media is all about the filters, all about how you look, all about what you drive, all about what you live in. It's all about the outward man. Come on. And so even in the church, we've made it about the outward man. This is how we look, how we dress, how we talk, how we act. Amen. The more cooler we sound, the more relatable we are to this culture. And that's all lies because because the same anointing, come on, that we read about in the book of Acts is the same anointing today that will change a life just like it did in the book of Acts. And they didn't have Instagram. They didn't have Facebook. They didn't have all of these apps, come on, hallelujah. But all they had was the word of the Lord in their hearts and the anointing of God upon their hearts. Hallelujah. Can somebody say amen? amen. And so well, that's what the anointing is. And that's what the people of God are called to be in the river, in the river, in the anointing. Hallelujah. And God will teach you. It's not in your own strength. It's not in your own ability. Can somebody say amen? Uh, hallelujah. If God puts a microphone in your hand, come on, watch out now. Because it's not about how loud you can be. It's not about how much you can shout. Uh, it's not about what words you can use. But oh, it's a about how much can you yield yourself to the anointing? How much can you surrender yourself, uh, come on, to the anointing? Because I might be the quiet kind of guy, uh, but oh God, when he anoints me, I get the kind of loud. And you might be the loud kind of person, but when you get the anointing, he will just bring structure and order to it, and you'll find yourself flowing and ministering in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, can somebody say amen? Ah, I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost. That's why I said it's getting deeper now. Hallelujah. And some of you might be just the timid kind of person. Come on. You just, you just, you just don't like to be in front of people. You don't like to, you know, whatever. But when the anointing comes on you, come on, you find yourself another person. You're another person. That's what the Bible says about Saul before he got, when he got the anointing. The Bible says, and when the, the spirit came upon him, he was turned into another man. Hallelujah. That's what the anointing will do. It'll turn you into another person in moments. People will not be able to understand you. They will say, wait, you're that quiet one. And all of a sudden, you're loud. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, you're talking about Jesus. All of a sudden, you're laying hands uh, on the sick. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Come on, when the anointing comes upon you, can somebody say amen? Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And that's what it is to have a culture of revival is the anointing, uh, is to be a people who understand the anointing. When we come together, we got to protect the anointing because if we operate in the flesh, we'll hurt people, we'll offend people. Come on, we'll, we'll cause all kinds of things. But when we learn how to surrender our spirit and our hearts to the anointing, God will get the glory and results will come forth and lives will be changed. Uh, hallelujah. 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 And somebody says, how do I surrender my heart to the anointing? Just like we read where David said, oh God, my heart cries out. My soul longs for you from deep on to deep. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know your power. I want to know your glory. I want to know your fire. Oh God, use me like you used the Catherine Coleman's, like you used the Amy Simple McPherson's, like you used the John G. Lakes, like you used the Smith Wigglesworth's. Oh God, I want to know you in that place. And that's where it starts. That's where the place of surrender happens is when you begin to cry out to God in your own time. You begin to surrender your heart and say, Lord, maybe there's some pride that needs to die in me. Come on. Maybe there's some selfishness that needs to die. Maybe I just, you know, I thought it was all about this and all about that. But, oh, God, produce and develop the anointing within me. Hallelujah. In my heart. Glory to God. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, because I thought, Lord, oh, that this was how you preached and this is how you were supposed to do it. But, oh, God, I realized in this place of surrender that that's not your way, but that was my way. But here I am, Lord, back to the drawing board. I repent and I ask you to work a work in me that no man can work, but only the work of your hands can do. Uh, hallelujah. And that's how it comes. And that's how the anointing is developed on the inside of you. Hallelujah. I can't just get up here and grab a microphone 
and shout my lungs out and expect God to do something with it. But I got to yield my heart and surrender. Come on my heart to him and say, oh God, if you're going to put a mic in my hands, Lord, let me not say one thing. Let me not do one thing that is outside of your anointing, God. Oh, but Lord, let everything I do, let everything I say glorify you and be of you, oh God. And there's a cry that got to come forth that David cried out. He said, deep cries out unto deep. Oh, a deep cry, God. Oh, a deep cry of surrender, oh God. Oh, a deep cry. Oh, Woo, my God. Somebody give Jesus praise tonight. Somebody give Jesus glory tonight. Hallelujah. 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 See, that's the problem is that today is that some don't know surrender. They don't know how to yield their hearts because we're used to doing things our own way. We're used to doing it our way, my way, or the highway. But oh God, when I surrender, because here's the thing, here's the thing, the anointing will bring you honor. The anointing will bring you respect, but that doesn't come by us. Come on. Mm, I'm preaching tonight. It does not come, come on, by us getting into a pulpit trying to gain the honor and the respect ourselves. Uh, come on, because the flesh wants respect. The flesh wants honor. The flesh wants, come on, accolades. Uh, but oh, God, 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 I said God will bring the honor when you learn to surrender your heart to him. Hallelujah. Ma kosapa. I didn't get into ministry for honor or respect. I didn't get into ministry for self uh, uh, validation. Come on. I didn't get into ministry for any of those things. Uh, but I didn't, I got into ministry because he called me. And he said, when I call you, I equip you. And when I equip you, come on, honor and respect will come because you know my heart. You surrender to my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Ministry is not about getting validated. Come on. It's not about, come on, because I need I need compliments. I need honor. I need respect. Oh, Rabbi Kosa, that dies in the prayer closet. Come on. That dies when you surrender your heart when you come to the place and say Jesus everything I do everything I am is because of you everything that I do everything that I say is because of you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah what I've learned is that many times what you're going to say is not going to get you the respect that your flesh desires Ooh, hallelujah so we better surrender our hearts and we better surrender our thoughts. If God's given us a platform, if God's given us some people to minister to, we better get right. We better get with it. We better yield our hearts to the Lord and we better surrender our hearts to Jesus. Come on and follow his flow, not our own flow. Can somebody say amen? Oh, hallelujah. It hurts me to even think about stepping up to this pulpit and purposely saying things and doing things that will hurt people and offend people. My God, help me. People will know they're not going to honor you and yield to the word you speak because you're trying in your own flesh. Come on to get a response. They'll yield when they know, yeah, the word is kind of, it's a little harsh tonight. It's a little heavy. It's some toe stepping going on, but I see the anointing. I feel the anointing and I know it's the anointing that's flowing and I'll yield to the anointing. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God knows how much I love his people. God knows how much I pray for his people. God knows how much I want for his people. Oh, I would never dare. Come on. Hallelujah. And see, the ministry God has given me is a ministry of revival. It is a toe-stepping ministry. But everything is backed by the love of God. Do I have the character when I minister to the people? Do I have the character when I fellowship with the people? Can somebody say amen? It must be backed by those things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we better get with it, church, because if we want to get promoted and we want to go to the next level that God has for us, then we better surrender. Come on and go to the next level of surrender in our personal lives. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. How many of you know when Jesus spoke to his people, the Bible says he came unto his own, his own received him not. And he ministered to them and he called them brood of vipers and he called them this and that. But yet he hung on a cross and said, oh God, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Yet he ministered to them in a strong spirit. Come on. And he, he warned them in a strong spirit. But yet he had the love to back it up. He had the love that he could say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And many people are quick, come on, to preach. Many people are quick to teach. Many, pe many people were not sent. They just took a microphone and went, come on, without the anointing. And they hurt people, and they divide people, and they offend people, come on, and they split churches, come on, because they were never called and sent by God, but they just got the microphone and went, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to protect. I don't care how large, how small. I got to protect. Come on, the people of God. I got to protect what comes from this pulpit. I got to protect what comes from this ministry. I got to protect. Oh, God, help me to protect. Help me, oh, God. Hallelujah. And I haven't been perfect, and I'm not perfect, and I won't be perfect. But, oh, if you would just give me grace and walk alongside of what God is doing here, you will see, come on, that everything that is being done is done by the Spirit's leading. Hallelujah. 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 And I may miss it here or there. I may miss it here or there. But, oh, my heart is constantly before the king of glory. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, I don't want to. That's why even dealing with this deliverance thing, I, I don't take it lightly. I say, oh, God, I don't want to speak my own opinions. Oh, God, I don't want to teach my own thoughts. But, oh, God, if I'm wrong in an area, Lord, here's my heart. Correct me, oh, God, and show me so that I can give your people the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me. I care about God's people. I don't want to see them out there tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Hallelujah. And I don't know it all. And I don't have the answers to everything. And I don't claim to be an expert. But, oh, I will put my heart continually before the Lord. Oh, God, here it is. Oh, oh, Jesus. So there's a heart and a character that comes with it. Yes. Come on. Oh, believe me, I, although I know when God's anointing moves, there's times that I do go home and I, I say, Lord, did I miss it? God, was there something that I, I should have said that I didn't say or there was something that I said that I shouldn't have said? Oh, God, I'm constantly, my heart is before the Lord in that realm. Uh, Wash me, purge me, cleanse me, Lord. Oh, anything false, Lord. Anything. I don't want to be false, God. I don't want it, Lord. You know my heart. I want the truth. I desire the truth. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Don't ever try to step into an office if you're not ready. Because it takes surrender. It takes preparation. And you got to know that you know you are called. Because there is a move of flesh and there's a move of God. There is a move of flesh and there's a move of God. And not everything that has Scripture written on it is of God. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? How can that be? Well, Satan himself, I'm not calling anyone Satan, but I'm saying Satan himself quoted the Scripture to Jesus. And I've seen this where people try and take Scriptures and they take them out of context to try and back their fleshly attitude or words or mentality. 
and it should not be so. Because you may get away with it for some time, but there's going to come a head-on collision with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost, either you're going to humble yourself, which is a beautiful thing. I know it hurts pride. It hurts ego. But if you don't repent and humble yourself before the Lord, you better believe that the Holy Ghost is going to humble you. And there will be a head-on collision. And yes, it's in love. Yes, it's in grace. And he restores us. And, and if we surrender, we'll come out of that better than we were before. Amen. But I'm telling you, he will only allow certain things. And especially when it comes to God's precious sheep. And when the sheep are touched, not only does God have a problem with it, but because God has a problem with it, I have a problem with it. Amen. And it's my job. I'm responsible. Come on. To protect the sheep. And, and Jesus is the good shepherd. I'm not. He's the, he's the shepherd of the sheep. But he's given us earthly shepherds. Earthly ministers. He's appointed fivefold ministers to help nourish and protect the flock. And I take that very, very seriously. Ask anyone who's known me throughout the years. I've had men come into churches and, and, and they were there for one reason. To pray on the single woman. And because they wouldn't heed the Spirit of God, by the Spirit of God, I called him out right in front of the whole church. Because he would not heed. So the Bible says publicly. And I rebuked him in front of everyone. Not because I wanted to. It wasn't a Jesse thing. In fact, a single should find other singles in the church. But this wasn't that. This was a predator. He wasn't after, can we date and then let's pray about it and see if God's called us to be together. He was after something else. And I rebuked him. And he never came back. But it's my job. I don't, I don't play. I will not put up with it. By the grace of God. I love people. But you, I mean, we walk in love and humility. Love people. But there's certain spiritual things that you got to deal with. My God, my God, my God. I, yeah, we're on live, yeah. So surrender. And I'm, I'm just, I'm on the last portion of my notes here. Just, just bear with me. The anointing is here. The power of God is here. And this is for all of us. Come on. We can't say, look around and say, this is for, for my neighbor. I've been in services, and, and, and I, you can pick that up in the spirit. And you say, oh, I know that's for them. No, it's for you. This is for all of us. I'm preaching to myself, too. But we can't say, well, I, oh, I know that's who that's for. Oh, I believe me, I've been in those services. You know people, oh, I know, oh, pastor's really, yeah, get them, pastor. I know who that's for. It's for you. Humble ourselves. Humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. If I know it's for my brother or my sister, then I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray, God, yeah, just work a work in them, Lord. I'm not going to, you know, highlight them out of the crowd. I'm going to pray, Lord, just touch them, deal with their hearts. I, I know you're ministering. You actually, you're answering my prayer, Lord. I've been praying for you to touch them. Okay, let's pray for them. Lord, do a work in them. Come on. I've been in the heat many times. I've been on that end. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just go to go to one of Pastor Rodney's services <laughs> in Florida. I've been I've been on the other end of it. And I've been through the motions. And I've been through the emotions like, ah, oh, yeah, I want to leave. Forget this. I came here to get blessed. 
And now the pastor tell me, you know, oh, but I've had, I've gone through all of those emotions. And then I come to a place of surrender. And say, Lord, yeah, hear God. Deal with my heart. Bring me under, saturate me under your anointing. Hallelujah. Do surgery. Hallelujah. And it's an ongoing thing. I don't, I, we're all growing. Hallelujah. My God, my God. My God, my God. The anointing is not, is, so it's not a feeling. Right? I'm just going to finish up my notes. Are you okay? Amen. That's good. So the anointing is not a feeling, but it is felt. I said the anointing is not a feeling, but it is felt. Come on. I mentioned earlier, right? I've already said this, some of the stuff in the notes. It's times it's like, it's like unscrewing a light bulb and then putting your finger in there. The anointing will come, right? So not the feeling, but it can be felt. People can be overcome by the anointing. You know, the people falling down on the floor, right? People witness. These are results of the anointing. People fall, they cry, they weep, they, 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 they shake, they, they, they laugh. They, you know, there's different responses at different times to the anointing. But it's not the feeling. It's not about the feelings. It's not about the manifestations. It's about what's happening inside. Amen? The anointing, like I said earlier, is like the wind, right? You cannot see the wind, but you see the results of the wind. People get saved, healed, set free, delivered. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why we need the anointing. That's why we need the anointing. And you ever been, you know, or, or, or sometimes in a service where, you know, some people are being touched and then others are just kind of like, yeah. you know. They're, they're just not there mentally or they're going through things. Amen. That's why I said that because the anointing must be caught. It must be plugged into. Amen. So no matter what you're feeling, like I get it. We all go through things. We have bad days. We go through things throughout the week. We face things. I get it. We all, we all got those things. But And we come to church and we don't feel like it sometimes. We don't feel like being there. I don't feel like being around. I'm not saying I, but I'm saying... Sometimes we don't feel like being around people. We don't feel like gathering with people. We don't feel like worship. Oh, I know worship's going to go for, you know. And so it, 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 that doesn't mean the anointing's not there. It means that we need to plug into the anointing. Is that, okay, I have all those things, but this is the place to lay those things down at the feet of uh -huh. Jesus. Amen. And tap into the anointing. Can somebody say amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then it also corporately is an overflow of our personal time. So you can see that some people may not have that personal worship time, personal prayer time, personal time praying in the spirit. Because when we come together, that's there's an overflow from that. We bring it into this atmosphere. Amen. Hallelujah. So some people, they've never been around it. They've never been touched. They've sat in dead churches all their lives their spiritual life. So when they show up and there's a charged atmosphere and the presence of God is there and things are happening, they step back and say, is that, I don't think that's of God. And that's why we don't, we don't, you know, some people are, you know, they'll enjoy it, but they don't want others to know they, they, they're enjoying it. Hello. They'll sit there and be a part of everything and they'll enjoy the presence and the experience of Pentecost. But then when it comes to, uh, you know, bringing other people into it or, 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 or wanting others to know, no, I have no idea. <laughs> no clue. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So they, they, you know, they never spend time in worship or in communication with the Lord, okay? And so they're almost on another wavelength. We've talked about this, how the anointing is like, it's like radio waves that are going through this room. There's waves going through this room. We can't see them. But if you were to take a radio, an antenna, and turn to the right frequency of that radio wave, you would tap right in. Amen. So they don't know how to tap into that radio wave. They don't know how to partner up with it. Amen. And plug in. And so we teach them. We show them. 
like this, we're, we're preaching and, and teaching on building a culture of revival. Be a people of the anointing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So if you make the right, if they make the right adjustment in their spirit, guess what? They're going to find that wavelength and it's going to go for it. Hallelujah. Praise God. 